Hey guys, I am married. Oh guys, I, I just, I, I don't even know where to start. It was the most perfect, magical, beautiful day. Honestly, I can hardly believe it actually happened the way it did because it just everything I've always dreamed of since I was a little girl, it came true. It was absolutely perfect and I am so, so, so happy. We are both so, so, so happy, me and my husband. <laughs> I will have a blog post up very soon with photos from the wedding, um, talking you through the entire wedding, how everything looked, how everything went. But this video right here is about something else. This is about my wedding dress, which I made. I set out on that journey um, shortly after we got engaged in autumn of last year. I'm going to walk you through the entire journey. I vlogged bits and pieces throughout the past months as I was working on the dress. I'm gonna show you all of those clips, but I guess we need to start at the beginning because I lost some footage there, unfortunately. That's, you know, it happens when you film over several months. First, I think I need to tell you a little bit about the inspiration for my wedding dress because I had a pretty clear view of what I wanted. I picked out a style um, of dress fairly quickly. So I knew I wanted a dress that was fit for a forest wedding since we got married in the woods. The whole forest theme was pretty prevalent throughout the entire wedding and I wanted it, wanted, I wanted the dress to fit with that. So I definitely didn't want it to be too glamorous, luxurious looking, I guess. So no shiny materials, no rhinestones, things like that. I knew I probably wanted lace and tulle, because I just love those materials. I wanted a long skirt, preferably A-line. I'm really not into the whole mermaid or just tight fitting thing. And I also didn't want a, you know, ball gown type of princess skirt, because I didn't think, again, that would fit with the forest theme very well. So um, something more loose and flowy. And I knew for sure that I wanted sleeves, long sleeves. I set up a Pinterest board, and if you scroll through that, you can notice that there are many similarities between the dresses that I pinned. In general, most of them have a deep V neckline, uh, front and back. They have long bellowy sleeves made out of a thin sheer material, usually lace or tulle, a tight bodice, and then a flared out kind of A-line skirt, preferably with a train. When I had a general idea of where I wanted to go, I had a Pinterest board, I had more or less a direction I wanted to go in. It was time to get started with making my pattern. I wanted to draft everything myself, so I started by draping a mock-up. A couple of weeks later, the situation with the pandemic got a lot worse in the Netherlands. We were very worried that we were going to go into lockdown soon after. So my friend and I decided to hop into the car, drive over to the best bridal fabric store that I could find in the Netherlands, which happens to be way on the other side of the country. So we made a little road trip to go look for fabric. Honestly, I just wanted to take a look physically at the fabrics that they had. But once we arrived there, oh, that was something incredible. They had this entire section. It, it was like this, this dream sequence where you walk into a room and it just goes, oh. The store, by the way, is called Van Goolstoffen in Tilburg. 
that they have this section uh, with bridal fabrics. Mostly what they have there is bridal lace and it was just mind-blowingly beautiful. Huge selection. So we started going through that with one of the sales assistants and pulled laces and just everything was gorgeous. One of the laces that first caught my attention, I was like, that is really, really cute. But I can't have that because it had a little bit of color in it and I wanted a white dress. So, you know, I pushed that one to the side, looked at all the other laces, but I kept returning to that one lace. The lace I was looking for was something botanical, uh, but I didn't want it to, ne to necessarily be very floral. I didn't want roses or anything that looked very tropical, you know, in the flowers, the flower motif. Kind of modern looking, but still very classy and more or less timeless. So it was really, really hard to find a lace like that. I found many of the laces a little bit too stuffy, I guess, maybe a little bit old fashioned, rosy. <laughs> this one lace was just perfect, but it had that color. And at that point I realized, I don't know why it took me this long to realize that actually most of the dresses on my Pinterest board are not actually white. <laughs> so many of them are a light blush or a very light cream or even a very light beige. So at that point, I spontaneously decided to run with it, to make my dress not completely white, get this lace with the color accent and run with that accent throughout the entire thing. So I think it's time I show you the lace. Here it is, I have a little bit left over. This is the lace. I'm gonna show you a little bit more up close. It is floral, but abstract enough to not be any actual flower. It is elegant and classy, but also modern. And I absolutely love the little beige blush, soft colored border that it has. I love the placement, the kind of density of the appliques, um, as well as the shape of them. And yeah, this is it. This is my bridal lace. So along with this, I got a lining fabric and two colors of tulle. I got off-white tulle and I got a tulle in a kind of, you know, beigey blush color to match the edge of my lace. So my idea was to have my bodice and sleeves made out of this and then build the skirt out of layers of tulle, layers of white and that beigey blush color. Time for an update. All right, I'm wearing the mock-up part of it. Um, I have a bodice that I'm pretty happy with. I have a nice low back cut out and a low but still modest enough <laughs> V in the front. But there is an issue I am running into now that I've attached the sleeve and that's this. Yeah, that is very unfortunate and very logical. Also, I'm thinking I have two options here. I can either close one of the sides, make a higher neckline either front or back, or I can have some kind of something that holds this together up top here, like a string or a ribbon or something. It's a bummer though. I really like the idea of having both a low front and a low back. But if I have to choose between closing up the front and closing up the back, I think I like this part better on myself, like my collarbones, than I do my back. I'm probably gonna wear my hair down anyway, so you won't be able to see much of the back. So I think I'm gonna redo the mock-up with a closed back and see how I like it then. And then that'll be one step done, one step closer to the finished dress. What I could do is leave this low back because uh, I am planning on making the bodice out of the white fabric, then a layer of the pink tulle and then the lace on top. I could do just a lace, a only lace insert here to fill this up. Is that a good idea or is that a horrible idea? The sleeve is going to be all lace by the way, just lace. Um, so maybe that might actually that might be nice. Let's remake this mock-up. Okay. I look a mess. I feel a mess. So there is this young lady who emailed me after I announced that I was going to make my wedding dress a few months ago. She is a seamstress, knows what she's doing, and she offered to help me if there was anything that I was struggling with. So I emailed her about the slipping shoulders and she told me that it is in fact possible to do a deep V front and back as I saw in um, all my Pinterest pictures, of course. And she told me there were a couple of ways to get that effect. The most important thing is to cut the pattern pieces on the bias. 
so that the threads actually pull the shoulder pieces together and then there is a second thing that you can do and that is to kind of cut the shoulder pieces in the back in the opposite direction of where you want them to go the thing is <laughs> i think i kind of understand the theory of this but i also think that this is kind of beyond my skill level right now to draft myself i'm sure i could sew it but to draft this out of nothing I don't think I'm ready for that and it feels very big and overwhelming to me right now so I tried just cutting it on the cross grain didn't work didn't do enough I'm also struggling with my arm size those aren't good because when I lift my arms the whole thing just messes up and all in all today was a very frustrating day it was one of those blood sweat and tears moments <laughs> and I bought a pattern I found this patterns for pirates pattern which as you can see has a deep V front and a deep V back. It cost me eight euro, so it was worth it no matter what. I'm just gonna uh, print this out and try it. Now they do say to use knitted stretch fabrics when using this. And that might be where this is going wrong because I'm using muslin to, to make my muslin, my mock-up, which doesn't stretch. My lining fabric doesn't stretch either, the one that I picked for my dress. The lace that I have stretches a little bit, but only in the places where there is no lace, like in the in-between kind of mesh bits. So it still might not work. Anyway, what I wanted to say, what I'm going to do now is to print out this pattern, try it in my mock-up fabric, and hopefully that'll at least help me get the princess seams right and the arm side and all the things that I have been struggling with anyway. It also kind of feels like giving up, but you know, I think I was maybe a little bit overconfident going into this project. I remember saying, you know, I can easily make a dress in a week and there hasn't been a dress yet that I haven't been able to make. But in the words of my good friend Hugo, Hoogmoed komt voor de fall. And here we are. <laughs> I had to buy a pattern. But hopefully this will help. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try it and we will see. And if not, I will have a little cry and then move on and do something else. Less than three months ago, I may have an acceptable mock-up next to me here. The sleeve isn't quite there yet, but I am happy with the shape of the bodice. I came up with a different design for the back. This is gonna be just lace, these top bits here. This is gonna be the same as the front. The sleeve is gonna be just lace. And you know what? I think it's time to just cut into my fabric because I've been putting that off for months now. I keep fidgeting with this mock-up, but at some point I just have to start working with the actual fabric. I think I need to get over my fear and just finally do something so that I have something <laughs> and I don't have to get married in a muslin. <sighs> I think it's time. Want to hear the story about the girl who forgot to vlog? There is a lot to catch you guys up on. So. I think actually this was the day that I did my last update. After I stopped filming, I got into this flow, like full on hyper focus. And I didn't stop sewing until uh, <laughs> I really had to go to bed, maybe like midnight. Made some executive decisions on the shape of the back, shape of the front. So <laughs> here is what I have now. The front of my bodice, I have my inner layer. There we go. And then my outer layer of lace. This is the regular lace and as you can tell I have been cutting out little pieces of lace. Here we are, little individual flowers and hand stitching them into this dress. I have been doing that for a few weeks? Has it been weeks? Maybe two weeks now. It was a lot of work but I am calling it done right now. I did the most here and it's kind of tapering out as it's going to flow into more of just the lace. I didn't want it, the contrast to be too big. This weird bit right here, it's gonna wrap around like this. And then I'm gonna have just lace along the back here. And I'd like to get maybe a little bit more of that done today. But since I am now done with um, stitching on all of the individual bits of lace, I am now going to attach the bodice to the lining that I have here. I finally ordered some shoes. I found some shoes that will be perfect, I think. 
and um, so I know now know so I now know <laughs> how long my legs will be and how long I need the skirt to be to be floor length. Yeah, we are slowly but surely making progress. Two and a half months to go until the wedding. Pressure is on. <laughs> I am calculating my skirt measurements and I hope I did this right. I really struggle with numbers, but I put on my shoes. This is a look, a look. Oh yes, oh yes. So that I hopefully measured the right length. I didn't want it to be too ridiculously long um, and I did want a nice train. So I have a 35 centimeter train now. And then this should be the measurements I cut out, hopefully. But I'm gonna test it first, of course. Uh, I just hope I have enough of this mock-up fabric left to do that. Okay, so there's no way I'm getting that skirt onto <laughs> the remainder of my mock-up fabric. So I am going straight onto my tool because apparently my tool is three meters wide, which is insane and amazing. I need that. So I have here, I don't know if you can tell, so there's a very faint line across it. Hopefully the back, um, so that should be my center back seam and that should be my side seam with this being the full length of my skirt and this the full length of my train so there is a line going across it like that and i hope that is more or less how you make a circle skirt train <laughs> i am just gonna cut into it and if it's a complete failure i can always use it as a bottom layer i don't have to you know waste any of this fabric even if it doesn't work out i'm experiencing a couple of problems first of all this is so flimsy and airy that I can't tell what's going on at all. Like, yeah, I can see the general shape of the fabric, but how this is this gonna look when I do 20 more layers of this? No idea. So I'm not sure if I can base anything off of this. Second problem, the waist has stretched out so much <laughs> that it is now gigantic, so I can't check that measurement either. I'm struggling a lot. Also, I feel like every time I measure this fabric, it comes out a different length. I think it's just, it's, just, it's probably just stretchy. I've never worked with actually stretchy fabric before. Let me show you what I have currently. Please ignore the mess, but yeah, here we go. So skirt. I took 10 centimeters off the front because it was too long and now I think it's too short. So that's the first thing. But then again, one moment it looks too short and the next it looks completely fine. So I don't know what to think. The back, I think the train is definitely long enough. I don't think it needs to be any longer than this. But I can't really tell how it looks because it's just, you know, one layer of practically see-through fabric. I think, I think this will be, this will be it. Um, and I think I'm gonna lengthen the front of the skirt a little bit again. Skirts! Yeah, I started doing skirts! Oh, guys, this was a roller coaster! At first, I did the measurements wrong. Then I realized I am literally marrying a mathematician. Why am I torturing myself like this? So I had him recalculate and it turns out that wasn't even necessary. Originally, I was planning to attach the skirts kind of right underneath each other. Each individual skirt would start right underneath the next one. But then I realized that was my second panic moment, that I don't have nearly enough fabric to have to do that. When I went to buy my fabric, I wasn't actually really going to buy my fabric. I was just gonna go browse. I realized that there was probably a lockdown coming and I decided to just buy a bunch of fabric. And I'm glad I did because we did go into lockdown and we probably won't come out of it until after the wedding, but that's a different story. So I just bought a bunch of fabric, meters of tulle, not having any idea how much tulle I would actually need. So then I suddenly realized I wouldn't have nearly as much as I thought I would. I was only able to get three and a half right about skirts out of my white tulle and <laughs> one and a half, one and a half skirts out of my blush tool. So I panicked a little bit, but then when I actually laid them on top of each other, I realized that it is actually plenty and it looks pretty good. Um, I also had enough of my lace left 
that I could do a skirt out of that. So long story short, here is my skirt right now. I'm making tea, sorry. <laughs> but yes, here we are. Oh, isn't she beautiful? This isn't sewn, by the way. It's just pinned. That's why it looks kind of weird. There's a pin here and two, one on the side. But more or less, this is the skirt. A dress is shaping up, coming together. I have a bit of a train here, just a short one. Yeah, there was a lot involved in this. I had no idea how to sew tool initially. I figured that out. I'm not loving these visible lines, but I think there's no way around that at this point. And I did need a center seam to um, make this closure, which is another thing. I have no idea how I'm going to do. Like, how am I going to finish this? No idea. Who knows? What's going on here is a layer of white, blush, lace, blush, white, white. That is the skirt. And I think that gives the perfect amount of creaminess without it looking like a pink dress because if I lift the blush skirt up one level it looks like a pink skirt and that's not what I want I just want a hint of color and not you know for it to actually be a color even though the blush is very um subtle here's the color that's the dip yeah I don't think you can even tell on camera that well I just really really like it like this and the lace just peeking through I think when I move then you will get, you know, the hints of lace shining through and that's gonna be so gorgeous. I don't have an underskirt. I had planned to do so many layers of tulle that I thought I wouldn't need an underskirt because there would be enough tulle to become opaque. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> this lack of experience, I think, for the entire process of this. I have no idea what I'm doing and just figuring it out as I go along and um, it works out for the most part but this is just ah, just ah. so now I'm trying to decide whether I want to accept the sheerness or make an underskirt after all because that will be another layer of fabric and at that point I'm not sure this won't be too thick because I don't want to add you know too much bulk to the waist here <sighs> we'll have to see about that so I think I think what I'm gonna do is just stitch base all of these layers together try it on with like something skin colored underneath and uh, see if it's acceptably sheer or whether I really really need to make an underskirt. I don't have enough lining fabric, this this lining material, left to do a full underskirt. I don't think I even have enough to make a shorter type of skirt. There is still quite a bit of figuring out to do but we're getting somewhere. Something else I am doing, I ordered these buttons. They are pearl buttons, but they came in and are um, stark white. And I was hoping for a bit more of a, you know, pearly color, which is slightly cream. I hate that I still can't go into stores because this would have been so much easier if I could just go out and buy, you know, underskirt fabric or buttons. But now I have to order everything online. It's kind of hard to tell how this will translate on camera, but in real life, it's just that... Pretty, well, it's it's too stark white for the dress. Yeah, you can tell here. The pearl looks almost bluish, and I think it would just be nicer if it was a little bit uh, more of a warmer color. So I'm planning to have two here, one up top here. It is very much time for an update. I am practicing my hair and makeup today. There's a little sneak preview. Let me just turn off my music here. A lot happened since I last spoke to you. It is a week and a half until the wedding and <laughs> the dress isn't quite finished, but we're almost there. I mean, it's wearable, right? But there are still a couple of things that I want to tweak and improve. I think I should give you an update. I did buy extra fabric to make an underskirt, which was a very good decision. I'm very happy with that. Currently, I'm just trimming the lace because that stretched out a lot in some places. And I also got different shoes. Here we go, walking those in. Yes, this is a look again. <laughs> But yeah, I got different shoes, a bit of a lighter color, much better match. 
with this dress. Ooh. A little bit of a shimmer in the back. So here we go. That is what the dress currently looks like. It doesn't come across well at all on this mannequin, but you can see the dress quite well, I think. So the bodice is all finished. I attached the sleeves, very happy with how that came out, both in the front and in the back. I have my closures here. I have nicer buttons. I did end up getting different buttons. And I'm very happy I did because I love these. And those are just attached with those elastic hoops. I have one up top here that is currently attached with a snap button, but I don't like that. It's visible, so I'm gonna replace that with a loop after all. Sewed more appliques all along the waist here. This is all hand sewn on, but I think that came out fantastic as well. Just to form a tra transition between the bodice and the skirt. And I just love how the skirt itself came out as well. I love the lace peeking through. I love how it's very subtly beige slash pink blush-ish colored. <laughs> you can't really tell that on camera. I think it blows it out a little bit, but in real life, it's very clearly not stark white. And it has a little bit of a baby train in the back here. Oh, let me just drape that a bit more nicely for you so you can see. Yeah, it looks a little like this. Just a baby one. And all in all, I am very pleased with where this is going. Glad I finally got to do my hair and makeup trial. This isn't it, by the way. I took it off because Robert's gonna come home any moment now and I don't want him to see the whole thing. But um, yeah, I tried on my tiara and oh, I made a veil. Let me show you that. I used the edge of the lace on the edge here. There we go. <laughs> There's a little bit of that flower pattern repeating. And it is again, one layer of white and one layer of that blush cream. You can tell that is on the inside here and the outside is the white. So it's just attached to a little comb. It is about fingertip length. This isn't a very accurate representation, but yeah. It more or less matches the skirt color. So I'm quite happy with that as well. I'm only going to be wearing that during the ceremony probably. One thing I do still want to change is this, where the elastic is, because I don't think I did a very good job at that the first time around, so I'm gonna try and redo that. But other than that, and this snap button here, I think after I trim the skirts, it will be more or less finished. I am very happy with it, and I can't wait to show you how it looks with everything on. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm not entirely sure what happened yesterday. I must have lost my mind, because as I went to trim that skirt, I, for, for some reason, I just took way too much off and I did it very sloppily and then I took a step back and I saw what I did and I just I broke down. <laughs> Mind you, this is a week before the wedding um, and I had kind of completely ruined it. I didn't have the nerve to pick up the camera and film the whole thing. So I sat down with my needle and thread and I hand sewed all of the lace back on again. Luckily, <laughs> thank God you cannot tell. So let, let me let me just show you. There we are, you can't you can't tell. But then when you lift up the top skirts, I still don't know how how I managed to do that, but at least it's reattached. You can't tell from the outside, which is great. Um, I attached it, you know, in the same place where it came from. I just hope that it is secure enough and it'll hold and it won't just come off during the wedding. I might secure it a little bit more in some points, but for now, at least it's on again. Um, but it is now even more important that I do actually trim the bottom because if I step on this now, I will definitely tear it off and that would be horrible. So I am trimming it again, a bit more sensibly this time. This is all that needed to come off. Why did I take off that much?
All right, I put it on. The bottom looks good. Lace is perfect now. So a couple more details I need to fix. And one thing I haven't shown you yet is I embroidered the wedding date onto the inside of the dress. I thought that was just a cute touch. Yeah, June 1st, 2021. Another thing I need to fix still is I have this hook and eye closure on the inside here, but it's not good enough. I'm gonna need to insert a zipper here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that by hand. I already mentioned the sleeves, I still need to do those and this button. And it can't be a snap button. And a couple of these little applications are coming loose. So I need to reattach those a bit more securely. But we are very nearly there. I'm trying to walk in my shoes because these are absolutely horrible. They're gorgeous, but very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wear them and hope that they kind of stretch out in the right places. Tiny sneak preview of the dress on. I made a loop on the bottom. I hope you can see this. <laughs> I am very happy with the zipper in the back here. That is much, much, much better because before it was just it, it just it just created holes and that wasn't good. And now I think it looks great. So the tool is just left open and underneath the bottom layers those are zippered. Now really all there's left to do is just the sleeve cuffs and I think the dress will be pretty much done. I can't wait. I can't wait to be able to say that it is actually finished. Here it is, guys. My wedding dress. I made it. <laughs> I made it. So that last clip you saw was shot last week, I think. And in the meantime, I did actually finish the sleeves. They turned out beautiful, so much neater. I ended up hand stitching them because doing that by machine just didn't work. Now it is time for the reveal. I am gonna show you some photos from the wedding. I'm gonna end the video with that. So I wanna thank you so much for watching guys, for embarking on this journey with me of sewing my own wedding dress. It was a lot of work, blood, sweat and tears, but it was so worth it because in the end, my dress turned out exactly how I wanted. I was able to customize everything perfectly the way I wanted it. And I also saved a lot of money. I think it's useful maybe if I share for other people who want to do this as well. I think in the end I paid close to 400 euros in materials and that was the entire dress done including the extra fabric I had to buy for the underskirt. And I did actually look up a couple of those dresses off my Pinterest board, similar dresses, and I know those definitely cost several thousands. So I actually saved money as well, yay! <laughs> but most of all, it was just really fun. It was a great way to prepare for the wedding. Something, you know, a way that I could feel like I was actually doing something while we were planning a pandemic wedding and weren't even actually sure that it was going to be able to happen, you know, so it was something to have control over and I really, I needed that during the planning process. Enough talking, thank you so much for watching guys, here is the dress. Mm -hmm.